We are headed to meet Nate Brown. He wore the King of the Mountains jersey at the Tour de France this summer. This is gonna be a, a fun day with Nate, a chance to see him in an environment where he's relaxed away from you know, his normal routine. Last year, like after the Giro, I was drinking like six or seven coffees after it, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna stop, and I went cold turkey. I stopped drinking coffee, so I only do chais now. Ask him if he did the tour. Yeah, I did the whole tour on no caffeine. Whoa, that's amazing. <laughs> that's what I'm, everyone said. I drink chais now with the, with the boys. Can you get a chai in Europe? Yeah, at yeah, some places. How long have you guys been dating? Officially two, two and a half years. Well, a little under two and a half. Yeah. David Wenger was my coach. And I came down to do base camp with him, and you joined us for what one or two rides? Yeah, two two rides. And then we got barbecue, and we sat beside each other, and we did not talk to each other. Well, Nate did not talk. I was, you know, silently. Uh -huh. Laying the foundation. Yeah, right. <laughs> Austin is like a great city to live in and be a cyclist. Like October, it's amazing here. Yeah. Like I love October. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I might just come down for October yeah, now. Yeah, one, month uh, one month lease, and then go off and train somewhere. Yeah. You know, I told Annie. Then what, December, I said, I want to do the Tour de France. Well, we'll go even further. You got your schedule, and I was like, I think, I think they're prepping you for the tour. I mean, I was kind of half joking, but also the schedule just kind of looked like a schedule that would potentially prepare you to start the tour. But, but the tour wasn't on the schedule. I did the Dauphin in, and I went up to Andorra and uh, did a training camp there, and still I had no idea if I was doing it. And then, what, two weeks before, I got a call, and they said, Nate, we have some news for you. And, I still was like, oh boy, they're going to tell me I'm not doing it. And he said, you're going to do the Tour de France. Okay, here we go. Where's my curve? No. Hey, that wasn't bad. I mean, no, no, no. Oh my. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's be my greatest shot of all time. Oh. Are you keeping score, Kelly? Totally. When they told me, you're doing the Tour de France, I sat down and, and, I, and they said, well, what do you want to do in the Tour? And even taking the KOM jersey wasn't on the plan. I just said, I want to perform at the Tour. I want to be Rigo's, like, right not right hand man but just up there for rego in the mountains and that was and i want to get into a breakaway and that was like my goal for the tour i'm like more of a, a team player right. and like i have to be the leader i have to win right. but like you need both yeah. you need the guys who who uh are, are winners and like win at all costs and then you need the guys who are like willing to sacrifice and do everything january 2016, um, I was running for UHC, and we were down in Argentina doing, what was that race they were San called? Luis. San Luis. I had been having what are PVCs, which are just skipped beats, and they were annoying me, and they can be brought on from anxiety and thinking about them, so constantly thinking about all these palpitations brought even more on. And we were down in Boulder, and I went on a ride with Nate's little brother and my heart rate took off and it felt like what I had felt before so I thought it was fine and it would go away in you know 30 seconds. And I get a call from Johnny and he said you have to get out here right now and his heart just spiked. When the ambulance came they put me in and they hooked me up to all like the EKG machine. He said you're sitting at 240. What, what, what is the exam? So it's ventricular tachycardia, which is basically your heart races. They decided to put a pacemaker, well, it's a defibrillator, in. When it comes to being there for her, like, that took top priority over training. And they said, no problem, we understand, like, be there with Annie. I think just, uh, 
going through that with Annie, it, one, it brought us closer together and we became more of a unit, but it also helped us really pave a path to the tour. And I mean, it helped that I was no longer riding. I mean, we spent almost a whole year together. The longest we were apart was like a month. a month when I went to training camp and then to the tour. So like, and that makes it easier on the whole relationship, which makes it easier to perform. Annie told me, you have to take this opportunity and really live in the moment, enjoy this, because it, it is something special. You are at the top of the world stage, performing in the Tour de France. Oh, I'm gonna have so much fun with this bell. <laughs> oh yeah, building speed. I'm just gonna hit anyone. <laughs> that wouldn't be good video footage. Yeah, I mean the meeting that day was obviously Taylor had the jersey already, and so they kind of were like, "If you want to go back in the break, Taylor, feel free. Like you probably won't have the legs, but you have free range. But the guy we want to get in the break is Dylan Van Barra, because they thought it was a good finish for him." It was a flatter stage with a little kick at the end. And so he was our main focus on the breakaway that day. And they were like, Nate, you can go for the break if you want. It's not really a good stage for you. You know, just be there at the front, kind of help Dylan out. So we started the stage and the first KOM, that one, yes, I won. I, uh, <laughs> I kind of tricked the whole breakaway. I, I was on the back and I hit it with 500 meters to go. It took everyone by surprise. And by the time someone reacted, I was, I was gone. The next one I lost, but the thing is, after that one, the Katusha rider who won kept going. He didn't wait for the breakaway. And I knew, I said, this is my moment, because we were tied on points, and basically whoever won the next one was going to take the jersey. So it was an actual climb. And so I knew I was a better climber than him, so I went from a K and a half out, just I hit it. With about 500 meters to go, the director comes on the radio and says, you have 25 seconds, like, you can stop now. And in my head, I said, no way, like, I'm not going to screw this up. My director comes on the radio and he says, you have a minute, what are you doing? And then I was like, okay, well, I passed the line, I'm good now, I can ease up. So they gave us a bunch, so I only brought a couple back and I left the rest in Canada. But the one I actually wore is still in Canada, but this is the one that you wear on the podium. It's kind of crazy still to hold a Tour de France polka dot jersey. The first time you're, you're just so, like you don't even realize what's happening. It all happens so fast. You like get up there and you put it on, but then when you like get off the podium and you're like standing there and you're like, this is the Tour de France, like the biggest stage in cycling. And I just put on the KOM jersey. It was unreal. <laughs> What are we getting? Chicken wings and fries. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. People think these cyclists are these like monks. And I mean, some, yeah, definitely are. But we live by moderation. I think now we're very grateful and aware of obviously the consequences that like just this sport, I mean any sport, but this sport especially because it is so dangerous. But I think we're in a good place now. I want to continue to grow. I mean, I'm only 26 years old. I think I still have a couple more, well, more than a couple, quite a few more good years that I can give the world tour. And I just want to keep growing and growing as a cyclist, you know, just, yeah, just keep improving. The dream was and the goal was to do the tour and I never thought I would be on the podium in the Tour de France. I still take it into this day, I still can't believe it. 